All right. So I guess anyone who wanted to attend the uh, IMA session is here. Uh, Farhad and the woman, I guess we can start. Hey, guys. How are you? Do you hear me well? Yeah, I can hear you, but it seems that your microphone is being interrupted. Oh, yeah. I mean, we have to, we're in Dubai, so we have to use VPNs. The connectivity well, is not no, always no, the best. Now I hear you well. Now I hear you well. You can hear me fine, okay. though, right? Yeah. All yeah. right. Good. Thank you, Farhad, for taking your time to meet with us. I guess we start with the usual way we do AMA sessions. I firstly ask some questions from the community that I've gathered, right? Then uh, I believe you have also something to say, yes. And then we allow people to ask you questions live. Uh, we can start if you're okay with it. Yes, yes, sure, go ahead. Let's okay, so I have a two-parter. So it's a question for both you and uh, Roman. Uh, so from what we can see from, yeah, as well as uh, have been posting uh, some news very rarely uh, last time. Uh, our Twitter is also not that uh, active. And last time you have mentioned that we have managed to find someone uh, to start running Twitter. Uh, yeah, and it's still not the case. So this is the first part uh, of uh, the question. Uh, what is Wallace preparing behind uh, the curtains? And when the Twitter is going to be active, like when the social media is going to be active. And on the other part, uh, Roman, as you're the head of the development team, uh, a lot of people uh, uh, were writing me that they have uh, noticed that the number of pushes on GitHub uh, started to decrease. Uh, right? So, yeah, this is a two parter. I guess Farhad starts, and then Roman can answer as well. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, in regards to Savella's so team and partners and internal teams and so on, we've been working quite, um, quite diligently during crypto winter. There's a lot of um, new projects, uh, like I said before, coming on chain um, in the DeFi world. There's a lot of gaming projects that are coming on. There's a lot of tokenization projects that are coming on board. Um, and the reason why the social media and everything has been quiet um, is just because the, we didn't think that it was the best time to announce uh, the launches of all these projects as the market has been um, not in a very favorable position. But now as the markets are slowly turning around um, and we're gearing up to launch all these new products, this is when we're going to make uh, more marketing pushes, uh, including social media. Uh, and then on the details of the projects that are coming on board, I don't know if I should repeat myself or, but I did post it in the group that there is, you know, tokenization, uh, as treasury bills in the form of a stable coin where you can get yield. There's going to be trade finance platforms that are going to be using Velas. Um, there's going to be borrow lend protocols. Um, we have some external developers that are already built launch pads and others and then roman will tell you about a lot of the technical developments with the wallets and different partners and service providers that are coming uh, on velas as well yeah Thank and you. on the second part um in regards to the github activity uh so just in order to understand the situation properly it's just like you know, everyone needs to know that like most of the development that is happening inside of Wellas is happening on the private repositories. Uh, like for example, uh, there is a new wallet um, coming up um, under like a new name and uh, a separate uh, legal entity. And, and, you know, that's like, like a huge piece that, you know, is being in works in a private space right now. Uh, of the GitHub, and that activity is obviously is not visible uh, to the public. 
Um, also, most of the um, Valus account related repositories are private, like as well, just before we do the audit, we don't release the uh, code base, like of all the components. Uh, so yeah, you don't obviously see that as well. And on the Valus chain uh, repository, the activity is quite, uh, like quite healthy and, and it's on the level as it like, always has been. Um, yeah, so maybe just like the wallet activity uh, that, you know, is that is visible to the public is something that concerns the public, but, you know, just so everyone knows, like the current wallet that you have, you, you see in the production is not being uh, developed anymore. We just like do uh, fixes, like if uh, those uh, appear. Uh, but most of the de wallet development is concentrated on the uh, private repository, which is like related to the uh, new wallet version that is coming up quite soon. I got your point. Yeah. Uh, some people told me about private repositories, but I just wanted to ensure that it's the case. Uh, thank you for your answer, guys. Uh, also, the next question is, uh, uh, maybe a year ago, maybe a bit more, Wallace was at the top 100 in coin market cap. Currently, we are placing uh, 450, so somewhere somewhere in that region. Uh, what are the plans, and how are we planning uh, to go back? Firstly, I guess the plan is to go back to top uh, to be in one top 100 of coin market cap. And what are our not long long term uh, points, right? But uh, what are we aiming in short term? Well, we don't aim for price points of the token because that would be speculation. But what we're trying to do is uh, revamp the ecosystem by providing um, the right tool sets and the right systems in terms of DeFi, they'll bring a lot of liquidity on chain. How do we bring liquidity on chain is by giving, for example, uh, very stable yields and guaranteed yields uh, on DeFi and that can bring the traditional markets and traditional liquidity into the crypto market through our um, through the new systems that are being launched. Um, also, there's the new launch pad, which is going to, to help. And there's a new fund that we're structuring out of Abu Dhabi. Um, that's going to be in partnership with Hub 71, who, which is um, financed by Mood Badala, which is one of the largest funds in the Middle East. So they're going to be participating with us. And that fund is going to be focused on investing in projects on the Velos blockchain and somehow bettering the Velos blockchain. Um, so from DeFi liquidity, then bringing real world use cases of uh, of the blockchain and using our high throughput transactions. So we are actively speaking with several big players in the in the telecom space uh, and utility providing um, and different types of use cases that we'll announce soon that will basically give us a lot of exposure, give us a lot of transactions and a lot of users. Uh, but I guess short term would be to pack a lot of liquidity and bring systems where user can borrow against VLX, stake VLX um, and other coins and then participate in different systems and get different types of rewards. Uh, but in essence, in short, is to ramp up liquidity and provide systems that will give token velocity. All right, I got your point. Do we have any dates? or at least the date range uh, when those short-term calls uh, or coins are going to be written? So it, it, it's, it's, it's all different projects, right? Mm -hmm. But we're kind of working together to do similar launch. So I think the first one that's going to launch, it should be by the end of this month, is MIMO. MIMO is the stable coin that is backed by US Treasury bills. Um, and that one, the stable coin is going to yield you 5% right now. So that's going to launch first. Um, then we have Trade Leave, the platform, which is going to launch its web too. And then the, the blockchain part is going to be coming um, maybe within a month. And then the launch pad 
uh, and the compound fork. The compound fork will be the first product of the launch pad, hopefully. Um, and that we should be looking also within May for that to launch. So hopefully in May, all these four key pieces uh, of that DeFi ecosystem are going to launch. And then we're incentivizing external teams um, to build different DeFi products as well to complement um, the whole story. All right. Do we have the name of the launchpad? So we don't have the exact name, but it's mm -hmm. uh, an external team. If you know, OCAM team has been uh, building yeah, the yeah. launchpad for it. I just yeah. wanted to know if there is a name of the project or of the launchpad. That's fine. Um, it hasn't been publicly announced. I think it's uh, it's about to. All right. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, I guess we have uh, covered the most important ones. Uh, all right. One more question. Uh, last time uh, we spoke about the roadmap. Uh, so yeah, my question right now is uh, whether we have started working on the roadmap, and yeah, so how is it going with the roadmap in general? Yeah, yeah. so uh, as I said, there is a huge research that is that's been started back in September. Um, the fruits of the research mostly have been uh, presented to us and shown to us. Just the last few modules are, are being. Uh, are being handed over now and we have a huge huge report uh, and based on this report the timeline is going to get updated that's why it hasn't been reflected on the website but the website fixes uh, are being implemented as we speak and the roadmap hopefully will be published as soon as we're done um, taking over all this huge research because it's hundreds of pages of, uh, of very useful research about all the blockchain space as is now and everything to do with Velas and all the gaps that Velas has and all the things that need to be fixed uh, and then identified exactly which projects need to be forked, which tools need to be uh, put in place for our blockchain to be competitive with other layer ones. Cool. That would be great to see that research. I guess I saw part of it, but yeah. Mm, Roman, I have also a question for you. Uh, recently, I guess within two or three weeks, uh, Wallace's website and wallet uh, was a few times down. Uh, down. I know the reason uh, what was going on, but I just want you uh, to explain it to the public, right? Uh, what was going on and how we are going to fix it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so right now we are like, um, in this stage of the transition in between the uh, uh, technology provider in terms of the content delivery network. Uh, so as you know, like most of the modern uh, projects, they use uh, CDNs in order to efficiently deliver um, their like, content and APIs uh, across the globe. And yeah, right, like recently we had quite a few issues like that everyone was like experiencing and yeah we obviously uh, don't don't like that uh, experience ourselves so that's why we are right now in the face of the uh, mitigation um, solution let's say uh, so we are like transitioning between the providers right now just to make sure that we are not uh, dependent on just like one provider uh, so we would always have a backup solution like if something goes wrong with just like one partner we can switch over to another one yeah long story short uh yeah we know about the issues like that happened we know the reasons and we address them like as we speak as well cool Hopefully thank you that helps mm -hmm. yep yep i guess this is still better explanation from you uh to hear for the public and then for me and community managers. All uh, right, I guess this is it with uh, written questions. All of them were repeating itself. So yeah, I have asked the most important ones. Uh, so for Hart and Roman, if you give, have to add something from yourself, and then we can move on to people asking questions. 
Well, let's go with the questions, I guess, and then we can, you know. Yeah, all right, no problem. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so everyone, I, I already see uh, raised hands. All right. Wait, 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 I don't see who's talking. Uh, let's go one by one. So the first one is uh, username Wenki did. Uh, you are allowed to speak. Please go ahead. Wenki. One, two. Yeah. Hello there. Can I ask a question? Yeah, you can ask the question. So my question as crypto user, we don't want to lose our asset to some scam project that run away and disappear with our money. So why should we invest in the fellas as a long term investment? All right, thank you for your question. Um, that's a little bit of a strange question. So why invest in Velas? I guess because we are technologically superior to a lot of the other blockchains because uh, we're very much undervalued in, uh, in terms of our place in the market. Um, and because we have a solid team with a good reputation and a very good jurisdiction where we're working out of. Thank you for that. Uh, the next user not is... a financial advice. <laughs> yeah. <a> <laughs> uh, next it's user not financial is... advice at all. It's just you know. M X M. Yeah. Hi all. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Hello from Ukraine. And my question is, uh, what are your plans for the next five years? And when you see well as like a blockchain or like a technology? Because there is no understandable roadmap, so I want to know where you see well as in five years or in three years. That's my question, Senator. So long term, we uh, we have the ambitious plans of becoming a leader in the blockchain space. So having a lot more use cases on the Velas blockchain, having a lot more users, a lot more happening also have that interoperability and interconnectivity with other blockchains and other protocols um, and always keeping in tune with all uh, with all the newest protocols that come out to be compatible and to see if there's any need to upgrade or to add anything uh, for any new creations or new things come to have that implemented on the Velas chain as well but we're looking more at the unification kind of strategy to to also partner up with uh, other ecosystems and other chains to complement each other. Okay, thank you. Have a yeah, good maybe day. I'll I'll extend a little bit uh, on on this part. So, and in general, like don't forget that our uh, primary message to the industry is that like we are the fastest EVM blockchain blockchain out there. So we believe there is like many use cases where a fast blockchain would be needed like be it a game or something else like we we will be there to kind of offer them a fast and scalable solution and we believe that in five years like you wanted to hear the five years uh plans but like in five years they'll be like greatly like in more uh use cases that would require a fast and scalable blockchain under the hood and we will be always there and prepared uh, for, for for those uh projects so yeah, like we are the fastest blockchain running on the, the most popular technology stack in the blockchain industry, which is EVM. So we are like in a good position to uh, win the market share. Uh, thank you guys for your answers. Uh, I'm Sam, thank you for your, I guess it's Maxim. Thank you for your yeah, question. I'm Max. <laughs> yeah, so it's easy to guess. Uh, let's go for the others. The next uh, in the queue is Ahmad 2022, admin of Arabs Bitcoin. So you're allowed to speak right now. Please go ahead with your question. Hi, uh, my question 
what is the flash plan to improve flash wallet user interface and and user experience? Oh, okay, I'm not sure if I heard correctly, but the question was whether we are going to improve the current wallet's uh, UI UX. So from uh, yeah, internal, yeah. We, we, we have an external team working with our team on a brand new wallet. So for the existing wallet, there's not going to be additional functionality added. However, very, very soon in May, we're going to release a new wallet with uh, updated UI UX and functionalities, as well as we're integrating and have been integrated into many other external wallet providers, such as Savile, Cool WallRx and many others. Okay, okay, thanks. Thank you for the answer, Farhad. Let's go with next questions. Uh, the next username, Gerald, you are allowed to speak. Please go ahead with your question. Hello, I'm audible. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, so I'm wondering, like, do you have an ambassador's program? I don't know if you covered it. Yes, yeah. so we do have an ambassador's program. We I have guess a few ambassadors. I can yeah, or you can go mm -hmm. ahead and answer. <laughs> yeah, so as for how told, we have a few ambassadors working for us. Moreover, we have, uh, uh, let's say, composed. Uh, a new ambassadors program with the rewards and stuff but that ambassador pro program is not working at the moment because yeah we did not approve it till the end so uh, the uh, the ambassadors working for us are mostly uh, the ambassadors that for hot personally spoke to yeah and they are engaged with us yeah thanks for your answer Really cool. Sure, no problem. Let's go for the next one. Jimmy is allowed to speak. Please go ahead. Hello, can you hear me, sir? Yeah. What's the yeah, question? Yeah. Okay, okay. This is my question. Could you please share with you some the upcoming event at will as big partner fellas has been working with during its development period? Thank you. Can you repeat the question or if it's possible, uh, just write me in private. It would okay. be better because I didn't understand you at all. Sorry. I can repeat again. Yeah, if, please. Call you, please share with you some new upcoming event as well as big partner fellas has been working with during its development period. um i'm not very sure i understood the the essence of that question uh, so well partner events events um i mean there's not planned events we are going to be attending uh, a bunch of conferences and we're gearing up to to co-organize a hackathon um i don't know if that answers the question or not Okay, okay. Thank you for answering. Yeah, I guess that answers the question. Uh, we have also a user named Wallace who has raised his hand. Well, let's try. You can speak now. All right, this user has muted himself. The next one. Next user. Karten Arts. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, my first question is related to the Chinese market. So do you have any plan for promotion on China's market? And second question is about your pumping of your coin. 
do you have any future plans? That's all. Thank you very much. Ah, yes, so the Chinese market, we understand, is very, very important. It's one of the largest markets in the world in the crypto space. We previously had uh, some, uh, some presence in China and marketing partners and so forth. Uh, to be honest, we are looking for, uh, for a good way to get exposure in China. Um, there are no concrete set plans yet, uh, but we're looking to partner with uh, some of the Chinese funds and Hong Kong funds, and hopefully we'll uh, we'll participate in some of the events uh, in China and Southeast Asia. If you have any recommendations, please do let us know as well. Actually, we already contacted the official team, but uh, there's no reply. Okay, that's strange. You can uh, uh, you can DM to me uh, some information, work, and I'll send it to the relevant people. Here. Uh, can you check your DM because already sent? Ah, you sent to me also, yeah? Okay, maybe ping me again because I get a lot of messages and uh, they might go in there. And then try to send to to me or to Shirley or one of our community managers. We'll be happy to to try to collaborate. Thank you, guys. I guess let's move on. I saw a few people. Daniel, you are allowed to speak. Hello, sir. Hi, nice to meet you. So my question is, all the goals of your project are absolutely great. But one of the main factor user looking for in the crypto project is the use case of the token. So what are the use case of token in your platform? What are your plans to increase adoption? Roman, you want to take that? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, so like overall, the primary use case for VLX is basically it's a, like a utility token that serves as a you know gas token on the network. So it's like a directly related to the adoption uh, of the blockchain and you know the popularity of the ecosystem overall. So the more blockchain gets used by uh, people, the more gas fees are paid to the validators. So yeah, so it's like, it's a like straightforward utility function. Um, and the other aspect of BLX like that we can also uh, like distinguish uh, is the staking uh, feature. So yeah, like the more uh, network is getting used, the more you know, uh, popular the token becomes. And uh, as a second part, you can stake the token and earn rewards uh, for, you know, uh, for like selecting good validators. So if you stake your token and your validator is the good, like you earn a reward and that's basically the, uh, the primary utility of the LX. Thank you, Roman. Thank you also, Daniel, for your question. Uh, let's see if anyone else wants to ask a question. All right, I see one more user. Triple A, you are allowed to speak. And he is not speaking. Wave Addict, you are allowed to speak. Please go ahead. And again, nothing. <laughs> All right, we have no, someone no, here. I, now I could unmute myself. <laughs> Sorry for yep. that. Um, Shaki here. Uh, yeah, uh, my question is, um, do you plan uh, to be listed on the centralized exchanges? And if so, when can we expect this to happen? Uh, yeah, so regarding centralized exchanges, we have been in discussions with several of the large ones. We just decided not to list uh, on additional exchanges in the bear market. So we are speaking uh, with Bybit, uh, with OKX, and with the Binance team. Uh, I think we'll probably start in that order by bit, OKX, and then hopefully, and finally, we'll get to Binance. Um, we're looking uh, towards the second half of, uh, of May to start these integrations. Okay, cool. We have a next one. Uh, hello, guys. Hi, all. Nice to meet you. Um, I wanted to ask uh, two questions, if it's possible. 
Uh, one is what is your plan to attract more project on Velas chain? Uh, I ask this because uh, you have in the past the grant program, but the traffic is very low. Oh, we will need to have more people that using the chain uh, for a lot of programmers and I don't know people that to to have a, a good traffic. The, that that is one question and. If we can have a deflationary future, future to the Vela chain is possible. Uh, and uh, the second part of my uh, my question is: uh, Farad was thinking about a stable coin uh, in the near future uh, earlier. Uh, what is his opinion about Valera DAO hack that it was a, that was a stable stable coin on? Uh, on the Vela chain, I ask about it because a lot of uh, community lo have losses on that protocol. Also, I have a lot, a lot of uh, stake there with Velas. Yeah. So thanks for the two questions. We're we'll starting from the back one. Valera DAO is extremely unfortunate. We're uh, very sad, you know, that this happened. But this was not in the control of uh, the Velas team at all. Uh, this was an external project and there's not much we could do uh, about it. I mean, we did make a good due diligence. The team was pretty good. Uh, they forked a very known uh, protocol. Um, but unfortunately, they, they had some security issues. So that is that. Um, on the other stablecoin, um, you know, Hopefully, the security of the actual architecture and the design of the systems uh, is going to be much, much better. We are uh, looking at all their code audits before uh, all integrations to kind of assure more safety. But unfortunately, this still happens in our industry. Um, and then, coming back to your first question, how do we plan to attract more projects? The grant program uh, has been uh, getting less traction because there's been uh less quality projects um so how we're going to plan to to attract new projects is by making investments into the projects by partnering with other projects uh and other blockchains to kind of cross funnel each other projects um and a lot of projects uh we're hunting and speaking to and giving awareness about our existence because we spoke to a lot of gaming companies and a lot of projects that need high throughput and they're leaving Polygon, they're leaving BNB because they're just not fast enough and cheap enough. So uh, we're going to be targeting uh, those projects as well. I hope that answers your question. If not, please do let me know. Uh, okay, that's great. Thank you. It's in, it's by from your side it's any way to assist the community with the losses on velar hack or to help i don't know somehow thank you to do what on valero dap i don't understand trust the community with the losses i don't know to to help the community to uh, have more info about the developer of the team or something like this because Everything is very shady there. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, I guess. I thought their, their profiles were public. Um, potentially, we we're going to look into that if, if that needs to be clarified. But that team was pretty open as far as we we're concerned. And uh, we know the team members very well. I mean, very well uh, in the interactions that we had with integration. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wave, for your question. The next one is the Apricot Man, who is now unmuted. Please go ahead with your question. And he's gone. So, uh, hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, 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 you are. Okay, so more of a philosophical question. Um, 
how do you see the the future of blockchains? As we know, a lot of layer ones, layer twos are coming online. Uh, do you see this as a winner takes all market? Uh, many small ones, interoperability, or there will be few key players like we have today in the you know we have the top uh, big tech, uh, top five. Uh, what's your view? And I know this is a, bit, a little bit of a more philosophical topic. So in my humble view, I think there's going to be a handful of very good blockchains. Probably uh, most of the ones that are in the top right now will not be there long term. Uh, a lot of the new chains are very. Um, yeah, so for me, it's very important to have real world use cases, right? Uh, um, so I believe that uh, Bitcoin is always going to be there. Ethereum is always going to be there because they're the first. And then there's going to be the blockchains that connect other blockchains uh, and the blockchain that work with, uh, with, let's say, more institutional type of projects or government type of projects. OK, thank you. And if I can have one more uh, follow-up. Yeah, sure. OK, so you mentioned Ethereum, and we all know the scalability issues of EVMs. Um, do you believe that the solution to that will be layer twos, or will EVM itself evolve to a level of where maybe some layer twos are obsolete? Or do you think that there has to be an alternative to EVMs and that layer one will just have its own place, but never will be as scalable as it's currently perhaps uh, hoped for. Maybe a clarifying question like right to you. Uh, so what problems of the EVM do you see yourself like so we could you know better address your question? Um, yeah, sure. So there's a lot of talk about, you know, EVM being a bottleneck in its architecture, mm -hmm. and it's hard to uh, re-architect that because of the backward compatibility issues. And you know, there's a lot of investments being made to uh, have been made and will be made in the future. And there will never be the ability to solve some of the bottlenecks due to just the adoption. But again, I'm I'm definitely not the authority in talking about EVM architecture, so just mm -hmm. hope no, 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 this is good enough. Yeah, just to you know build the discussion uh, upon. It. So in general, that's the exact reason why Velas exists today. Like we took the most popular uh, development stack and virtual machine in the industry, which is EVM, and married to the technology like that brings the fastest blockchain in the industry, which is Solana. And like we got into the to, into a sweet spot where we, like we we scaled the throughput of the blockchain uh, through this exercise, and we are still not there to fully utilize the capacity of Velas blockchain. So, uh, like if you ask me, I would be like very happy to have this problem when we end up like being like with a congested blockchain and start. To think like okay well what do we do now <laughs> like there is like so much more capacity out there that Velas can provide to the industry before we start talking about that part uh so yeah like the issue the uh problem let's say that you brought up is like quite relevant uh to the ethereum blockchain and all the layer twos because they are built on you know basically similar technologies and their uh, throughput is not uh so great let's say uh so that's why velos is like very different in the uh, aspect of the throughput and as a result uh, the cost of the individual transactions and uh we are still not there yet to say okay velos is also congested <laughs> so we are like have a huge room to kind of uh, play around with like there's... i hope there will be a day where we say like okay Velas's capacity is not good enough anymore. So, but we still have to get there. Yeah, yeah. You and me both, and I'm sure the the community as well. Yeah. So, thank you for for the answers. Thank you for a nice question. 
All right. Uh, I have one more user to speak, and I guess we are going to finalize the email session with final words. Uh, so, Dennis, you are allowed to speak. Please go ahead. Oh, hello. I forgot to unmute. Hey, everyone. Uh, do you guys believe in games on blockchain? And if yes, what genre of games do you think best suit for blockchain? And the second, how would you compare the game market volume to other markets on blockchain? Hi, Dennis. How are you? <laughs> yes, good. <laughs> yeah, just so everyone knows, like we are good friends with Dennis. <laughs> and uh, he's the uh is the person that runs rush racing to uh video game on all the platforms so is it he has a quite popular game out there just you know everyone should check it out um yeah so in general uh like uh, I, i'm not sure I, I will be able to uh, effectively compare uh the uh, gaming markets because some like not up to date on the numbers uh, as a technology person. Like this is not the the numbers I, I like. I wake up wake up with. Uh, but I, what I can say is that the potential, like uh, the future, is like quite you know promising. Uh, so like this uh, union of like gaming world and the blockchain world is like. Uh, like in my opinion uh is like very promising because uh people like when it comes to the um, online games uh first of all uh they, they like to collaborate and interact and you know exchange stuff within the game and blockchain technology is like a very good uh, uh instrument uh, to activate uh, those workflows in, uh, like to the next level let's say um yeah, so and, and like one of the important aspects that comes out of that is that the speed would be uh, a very important component uh, and Velas is in a good position to address that. Uh, yeah, because like the, the more games you, you have on chain, the, the more they start to transact, uh, the more users uh, start to transact on chain, the more capacity you need to have uh, available on the blockchain level. And Valas in, is in a good position to kind of offer that, uh, uh, offer this solution to the gaming market. Yes, you're right. Do, do you have any? Do Do you have any insights on the gaming market? Maybe like, are you back online? Just like, I'm not the best one to you know talk about the gaming market. To be honest, oh, it seems like not yet. Dennis, do you have any other questions? Maybe. Uh, no, thanks for the amazing answer. And you're right, the speed is the key factor to choose the blockchain, and it's very important for gaming. But thanks. Thank you. All right, Roman. So I guess for hot uh, cannot answer right now. Uh, you will be the one to give the final speech, so to say. Yeah, and then the MA session. Sure. Um... Yeah, like on the closing note, I would probably say that uh, there is a lot of things that are coming up um, in the Velas ecosystem. Uh, one of the like obvious ones uh, that I'm personally excited about is the uh, new wallet, the new ecosystem wallet. Uh, so I'll, I'm like really looking forward to see it like going live and you know get the feedback from uh, the from the users. Uh, yeah, it's gonna like present uh, it's gonna have like a very different user experience like uh, compared to the current wallet that we have it's gonna focus like entirely on the Velas ecosystem uh, it, it's not gonna be multi-chain like multi-currency like in the current wallet is we're gonna focus like on um, like all the assets that run on Velas network first of all so it's gonna be like a portal into the Velas ecosystem where you could you know uh store buy send receive uh crypto assets that run on velas uh you would be also able to exchange the assets uh stake uh the coins and also navigate through the uh different dApps that uh, reside on the velas ecosystem 
And on top of that, uh, we finally would have a native integration into the hardware wallets. Uh, the first one would be Ledger. I remember on the last EMA session, there was a question related to Ledger. So here is the answer that, yeah, the new wallet is going to have that feature. Um, yeah, so you would be finally able to stake VLX with your Ledger and also participate uh, in the uh, like use the adapts um, on the Velas ecosystem with your hardware wallets. So it's like a huge improvement in terms of the um, hardware wallet support. Yeah, guys, I, <clears throat> I just wanted to add a little quick also that I'm quite very optimistic uh, about the near future of Velas, about all the cool projects that are coming on board that we finally are going to utilize our space technology and mint the first NFT from space, which should also be um, in May. So May and June should be very exciting times. For those holders, stay tuned. I think everything is going to start moving from our liquidity to project flow uh, to get our marketing back in check. We're closing one big, big deal internally that we cannot speak about just yet. But hopefully as soon as it's closed, ironed out, we'll publish it. And uh, the community is uh, going to have a lot more reassurance after that. So I want to thank everybody who's been with us, who is with us, who's going to be with us on this journey. And hopefully everybody's going to be happy and we're going to build some uh, some really cool things together. All right, guys. Also, I have a question that was asked a lot. I just missed it. I don't know how, it's, how did I do that. But uh, the question is about Alex Alexandro. So he was like the face of Velas to start with, right? Uh, right now he is uh, on the CIO position, but not CEO. So what is his role right now? And why we do not see him that much, uh, let's say, speaking about Velas in public and so on? Yeah, so Alex is still there. Um... You know, helping with the uh, with more high level issues. Um, the reason he hasn't been uh, more active and asked to kind of be more on the backside is that he had some personal issues that he was dealing with, and he 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 preferred uh, being less hands on. But he's still very much uh, involved and uh, and bringing very useful input into the project. Cool. I guess this is it from myself. Uh, so thank you, Farhad and Roman, for being with us. Thank you for providing these important updates to our community. Uh, we also have allowed everyone to ask whatever they wanted, right? So yeah, thank you also everyone who has visited this AMA session. And yeah, Sounds see you later. Perfect. And stay tuned. We're gonna do a Twitter Spaces maybe in a couple of days. Then we'll get Shirley and maybe some other guys uh, from the external projects um, to explain a bit deeper uh, yeah. how things are are, are gonna get launched. Yeah, let me know and we will announce. Thank you once again. Have a good, great one. Bye. Thank you. Take care, everybody. All the best.